Hey everyone, it's Anna. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. I wanted to hop on and share a gift that I got from Aunt Patty and then some things that I've uh, received uh, recently, purchased recently. So Patty um, and I got together on Saturday and went over to see my mom. And Patty made had made me these cute placemats and gave them to me on Saturday. Uh, so she picked this fabric up um, during her vacation recently and uh, decided to make them into placemats for me. So cute. Thank you, Patty. I love these so much. Patty makes all kinds of placemats for us and we really love them. Um, there's two of them here on my desk, um, but we have two on the table right now. So, uh, so one of the prints that she used is uh, this adorable uh, farm fabric cute little chickens and sheep and cows, strawberries, little rain boots, so cute, lavender. And then she also used this print here. She um, Actually, it's two different prints. This purple is one and then the green is a different print. And um, so cute. She's put these on the bias and uh, she's quilted it on her machine. She's added a cute little fabric here. She said that was from a local shop here. Um, it looks kind of like denim with purple. And then on the back, she's used this cute green and um, like yellow ochre uh, plaid. And then also on the back, she used the bits of the selvage here because they were so cute. She added those as a little added detail um, on the back. I thought that was a really cute idea. So here's the little chickens and it just shows um, what this does is shows uh, what colors they use to print the fabric. Um, but instead of just doing dots, I thought it was cute that they used chickens. So really cute idea, Patty, to add that on the back. And then on the other placemat, she added the title of the uh, fabric there as well and sewed that on as a little detail. So cute. So thank you so much, Patty. We are already enjoying these on the table and uh, <clears throat> these other two will look really cute on the table as well. So thank you for those. Um, I also received a Christmas card. This is my first Christmas card of the year, and it's from Gabby, Gabby with an I, and she was really intending to not necessarily send it to me for Christmas, uh, but for the Blues in July inspiration series that we have going, and uh, Gabby has been sending me beautiful cards, and um, even though she knows she doesn't have to send them to me or submit them to me, I really appreciate receiving them. So she's made this beautiful Christmas card. There's Santa with his reindeer, and I love this die here. It's a moon with stars, and she's die cut it um, out of the blue cardstock and put the silver behind so that it shows through the die cut pieces. So beautiful. Looks like she stamped some trees down here as well in black, and this Merry Christmas looks like it may be a sticker of some sort. So very beautiful card. She's left it blank on the inside for me to use later. So I'm, look at that, one card into my cards of for Christmas this year. So thanks, Gabby. And then on the back, she's stamped, um, handmade by Gabby with an I. So thank you so much, Gabby. I love that card. Um, I <clears throat> also stopped at Dollar Tree recently and I picked up a couple things. Um, so I picked up several of these little purple um, pencil boxes and not only is it purple but it's got silver glitter in it <laughs> um, but these are going to be the perfect size for organizing my impression obsession and my whippersnapper stuff when it comes in for release um, on a monthly basis I'll be able to sort them out into these little kit uh, boxes so happy to have uh, several of these I found this cute little pencil case there as well it has a little whale tail on the zipper <laughs> so cute and then you open it up and it's just a little you know nothing fancy on the inside um, but it'll hold a fair amount of uh, pencils for a little daily pack um, you know if you're going out and about for the day and you want to take some pencils for sketching or something like that I think this would be really really cute to take you could even pop some um, sunglasses in there or something like that so really really cute they had a, a pink one with a similar design and then they had a different color one as well which was like a different kind of fish or something I don't know but I really liked the little whale <clears throat> I also picked up some post-it notes. I thought these were really cute colors. And uh, so grabbed those. And then I also found these uh, pastel paper clips. They are two inches long. And uh, looks like they come in pink, uh, lavender, aqua, and gray. So really, really fun. And so uh, happy to have those things. Let's see. Um, I also have purchased a few things from the local art supply store um, and thought I would share those with you as well. Um, I picked up some gouache. I know I've shared um, a couple of the gouaches that I got recently. Um, I think these two maybe. 
uh, because I drew them in my sketchbook. Um, but anyways, I thought when I purchased this one originally that it was white um, and not yellow <clears throat> because I had also purchased a yellow. Um, so I went back to the store and actually bought a white. So now I am happy to have that. Um, I also picked up Ultramarine Light, uh, this Carmine Red, the Turquoise Blue, and Rose Pink. So those will be nice to have. Um, so there's those. And then I also got uh, this Carmine in Daniel Smith as well. I wanted a um, blue or red for my watercolors. So there's those. I also picked up some brushes um, from the store as well. <clears throat> Let's see. Let me get these out of here. Um, I went with the Princeton brand this time and uh, noticed that I was in need of some really small um, detail brushes. So I picked up this Princeton Zero Round, a really tiny little thing. And it's a Princeton, Princeton Heritage. And then this is also a Princeton Heritage, um, and it is a four liner brush. So it's really, really long. I don't know if you can see the bristles in there, but really long and thin. And then I also picked up this uh, two zero. This is a script liner. So it's a little bit shorter in length, but still um, a really nice uh, size. And then I also picked up this 8 flat shader. I really like the size of this brush. And then I also picked up the um, 1 round. And these are the Velvet Touch, Princeton Velvet Touches. So I picked up the 1 and I picked up the 0, which has a chubby um, handle and I kind of like that. And it's really little. So I thought I would get those. And their brushes are always a really good price at our, at our local art supply store. They're almost um, half of what you'd see them for sale online. So happy to support our local store. Um, I also picked up <laughs> recently um, a couple of different sketchbooks. So the sketchbook I'm currently using, which you've seen me share images from, is a cold press watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton, and um, being cold pressed, it has quite a lot of texture to it, and um, which is great for painting. I really love it for painting. But when I want to add text, um, I'm finding it a little difficult to write. Um, it makes the pen skip and things like that. Um, it's really hard to draw a you know, like a perfect circle or a perfectly straight line. Um, so you can see the jagged edges, um, which sometimes I'm okay with, but sometimes I really want to have a nice, um, you know, nice straight edge. So <clears throat> see, it's just, it was kind of hard to write. Um, made the ink skip and things like that. So I wanted to go ahead and pick up a, um, hot press watercolor book and so I went with the same brand uh, this is again the etcher and um, instead of being the cold press watercolor paper it's hot press which means it has less texture let me get this out of here so I picked up this a6 size and uh, oh yeah see that's nice and smooth so that I think will work really well. I think it'll still work beautiful for watercolor washes, but will work really well for um, pen and ink as well. And then I picked up this larger size as well. And they had these at the local store as well. <clears throat> the local art supply store. Let's see if I can get it out of the box. It was caught on the little <laughs> plastic. Cute little llama on the front. And so this is just the uh, landscape larger size. So that will be fun to play around with. Um, something different than I'm used to because I usually use, um, you know, fairly textured watercolor paper all with all of my projects. Um, so this will be nice to play with. And they also had uh, this one here, and I've seen really good reviews about this book. Um, it's quite a bit less expensive than the Etcher brand. It's the Handbook, Handbook Journal Company, but this is also 300 GSM watercolor paper, or 140 pound. Um, I don't think it's 100% cotton though. Um, yeah, it doesn't say, so I'm guessing no. Um, 
but I kind of liked the texture of this as well. Um, so I picked this up. Um, nice heavy white paper. So I think this will be fun to play with too. Um, and I have seen good reviews on this particular sketchbook. So I grabbed it as well. And again, it was um, at our local um, art supply store, which, you know, I really love supporting them, keeping them in business. And then also they had this that was new in store. This is the Canson XL Fluid, um, Fluid Mixed Media Tablet. And um, I don't care for coil binding so much, but this will be fine. Um, to use to see what it's like for watercoloring, maybe stamped images. Um, so I'm excited to try that. And it is not 100% cotton, but I thought since it was made for mixed fluid mixed media, it probably would be fine. And then um, I also picked up one of uh, these, the Hanamule um, uh, Carnet de Voyage, maybe? I don't know. Um, but it's uh, also just a watercolor sketchbook with a coil binding. But the reason I like this one so much um, is I can just snip um, each of these uh, sections here and actually remove the pages. And so what, I've, what I'm doing um, is I keep my um, swatches of my paints in here. And um, because I had filled, them all, filled up all the pages, I wanted um, either another book or to be able to add to this particular book. So uh, by picking up another one, I was able to remove pages from the other book and add them to this one really easily. Um, so let me see if I can show you. So yeah, if you look closely here, you can see how I've just kind of snipped it in between each of the um, rings here. And then I can just add it to this book. So this piece of paper came from this sketchbook <laughs> and I've just added it to this one. So and now I can flip through and see all the beautiful colors and see what um, paints I want to use um, for the project I'm working on. So there's some beautiful metallics there. Uh, but uh, I thought that was a good idea. Um, and then recently I also have picked up a few uh, new to me fountain pens and um, I'll go ahead and share those with you. I've been using um, these. These are just the Pilot Kakuno. I assume that's how that's pronounced. And um, while I like these, um, I think they write really well. I use them just for like personal notes or work notes, things like that. Um, this one I have a noodle, Noodler's Ink. I think it's Air Corp Blue. Um, so it's a really beautiful, like, um, Prussian blue. And then this one I have Noodler's Sequoia. So it's kind of a forest green color. And it also writes really well. So I love using these uh, for, like, work or, you know, writing notes in my cards or whatever. Um, but I wanted a couple that I could put um, permanent ink in and use uh, for drawing. So I picked up this Twisby. This is a Twisby Echo. And the packaging looks like this. Has this cute little storage box. Um, it also comes with a little tool that you need to use to take it apart to clean it um, if you want to change the ink out of it completely. Um, it also came with this little bottle of silicone gel. Um, cute little thing and that's just for lubing up the silicon, uh, silicon rubber gaskets basically. And uh, so cute little packaging and beautiful pen it's really nice a really nice weight it's much heavier than the pilots kakunos much heavier um it unscrews and i have uh, permanent black ink in fact i've been using this carbon carbon ink uh, with my watercolors uh, it's permanent once dry so it doesn't uh, bleed with watercolors over it and so this pen writes beautifully Oh my goodness, the um, nib um, has a really nice uh, tip on it. So happy to have that. Um, in fact, so happy I ordered another one uh, to put one of my other inks in. And then I also picked up this one recently. This is a Lamy, mm, I want to say Lamy Safari. I'm not sure. Um, but I also have the permanent ink in here. And this has a larger nib on it. And so you can see it puts down a much heavier line but also writes very, very smooth. 
And then also just something a little different. Um, I ordered these uh, sailor pens. These are uh, Japanese pens and these are a um, Fude, I think is how you say it, nib so that the nib actually is bent up. If you can see, see the nib there has a little bend in it. You probably can't see it against my finger. It has a little bend, it looks like it's bent up. And um, I have my permanent ink in here as well. And this is just gonna allow me to create really expressive lines um, or I can use it, you know, really, really super fine lines. I can make a medium line, um, but I really like the idea of being able to have these really expressive lines when I'm drawing. So I got that one. And then this was a two set uh, two, basically you got two pens in a package um, and so this uh, tip is not bent quite as far so it's still bent but just not quite as far as the other one so again if I want to do some really expressive lines with this one I have to hold it a little flatter um, but I can still get those really interesting sketchy lines so happy to have both of those and really inexpensive I mean I think these were uh, I want to say 10 bucks for the two pens. It was really inexpensive. And let's see. I don't think I... Did I share my gouache with you? I think I did. Um, I think that's it. I mean, that's plenty, but I think that's all I have to share. So anyways, um, I did do a couple of little paintings here. I already shared this one with you with the buffalo, <laughs> buffaloes drinking out of the river. <laughs> um, so here's another little one that I did um, just while I was watching TV one night. So it's, um, I also used a, a wink of Stella pen to add a little bit of a shimmer to the clouds and then to the water in the river. And then I did this one as well. And I also added the wink of Stella um, to the clouds just up to the top of the mountain here and in the water. So, And this was done using one of those little um, mini aqua pads one of these that I shared with you recently so I really liked it it's super thin but um it was nice to paint on so very very fun and um I think I have a painting in my sketch journal I can share with you it's nothing too exciting um basically it's the view from our backyard um, we have a little pond, a two-level pond. There's huge big trees here. We have an arbor that goes over to our back patio. Um, so we have the pond here and it has a little footbridge that you can walk over the pond. And then it's the view of the valley here below. So there's my chicken coop and their chicken yard. Um, here's the garden here with all the sunflowers blooming. And then all the pastures here that are in the, into fall color because of the heat. And um, we have a tree right here. I can't remember the name of this bush. It's like a, oh shoot, something berry. I, I always forget the name of it, but I just can't remember. And then we have um, a um, purple um, clematis planted here on the arch. So yeah, but not, not very exciting. <laughs> I really do like how the sky turned out though, so. But that is all I have to share, and uh, thanks so much for watching. Um, I will probably be on um, a bit later to share some crafty, um, crafty goodness as well. Um, I have some projects that I need to work on, and um, of course I'll be sharing those. So thanks for watching. I hope you all have an incredible day. Stay cool. I'm sure it's going to be uh, blistering hot wherever you are. We're supposed to get up into uh, hundreds and low low 110s um, just for a couple days this week uh, mostly just 100 or in the, in the 90s but that's really really hot so but thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon bye